today we're going to be talking about the five social media manager monks. No, my, I combined debunk and myth into monks. <laughs> Welcome back to Sub to Studios. I'm here with Emily Hay of Hey There Social Media. Today, we're going to be talking about the five social media manager myths debunked. And there's going to be an amazing, life-changing social media tip at the end. So stick around. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure you follow us, like, subscribe. Let's kick this off. All right. So today, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite topic in the world, social media. And we're going to debunk the five myths around hiring a social media manager. Are you ready for that, Emily? I am. Yes, Paul. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about this topic because, I mean, we do know that social media managers are one of the first hires that businesses of all sizes make um, because, like you said, it does take up a lot of bandwidth and it's not something you want to phone in. You know, and I think a lot of people really don't know that this role even exists, right? Uh, they might think, uh, you know, I could uh, hire my next door neighbor's kid to help me with that, or I could uh, maybe go out and I need to hire an agency, but there's an in-between in there, and that is this social media manager role, Definitely. Correct? We'll do a lot of talking about that today because exactly, not only do marketing professionals not necessarily realize how much businesses need them to be specialized as a social media manager, but the flip side, businesses don't realize that they can find someone who is dialed in with the skill set to really focus on that piece of their marketing. All right. So the good news is there are as many myths as I have fingers on my hand here. So we are going to talk right now about myth number one, and that is that the cost of this, and it can go both ways, right? Absolutely. So I'd like to talk about the myth of, of the cost, because like you said, it can be the myth of this is going to cost me a fortune and I'm not even going to consider hiring a social media manager or the opposite. I'm ready to go hit the pavement and find the right social media manager, but I'm going to expect it to cost next to nothing. And so the important thing to look at, you know, there's a happy medium in there that social media manager in between isn't, doesn't need to be something super expensive and not investing enough can sometimes has its, have its risk, correct? Sure. So let's, so let's talk about how this looks. I will get calls from businesses that are making that first inquiry. I'm considering outsourcing my social media. Here's what I need done. And as a social media professional, I love that opportunity to just listen, give us the networks you're on, give us the content you think you want created, give us the content that you're already creating and isn't working. So it's perfectly appropriate and very helpful for a business that's going to outsource this work to just list all their needs. So list and list and list. And again, that business owner shouldn't then think, well, never mind. I've just priced myself out of this opportunity because a good social media manager will hear all of the needs, but then be able to distill it down based on the objective. So maybe a quick example would be if that business owner says, well, I really want to create a lot of video and that business owner might think, so that means I need to be on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. Well, how about just really mastering Instagram? Like let's really have a focus on having a couple of reels per month. And then you can check that box for creating video, but not necessarily adding a whole lot of networks that could increase the scope of work, which would then increase the cost. Yeah. So absolutely. that would be, yeah. The first thing to talk about would just be that that business owner can absolutely come in and the more the merrier, let your, your potential social media manager know all of the things you'd like to get focused on, but do not be afraid that it's going to necessarily rack up a cost. All right. So now the step up above from the next to our neighbor's kids, myth number two is you can hire an intern to do it. Sure. So an intern, while there is a lot of validity, there's a lot of merit to having an intern take on certain tasks. The challenge I've seen with businesses having an intern do their social is twofold. One, that individual is likely newer to, to business. They need more management. And more management requires more time on the business owner's part. So while you are outsourcing and thinking I'm getting these tasks off my plate of content creation and content distribution, you have to manage that individual a lot more than you might have planned on. The other side of this, I would say, is simply the experience level with regards to messaging. So it, you, can, you can know how to use TikTok but you might not know how to message for a brand, how to write posts, how to create a story in a video format. Again, just because you know how to record the video and upload the video doesn't mean that that, that person is the most qualified. 
Yeah. And if you're in a position to mentor somebody and you want to invest that time, it's not a bad option to look at. But thinking that you can say like, yeah, you know, bring in an intern and they're just going to hit the ground running and be great at it. Those are kind of unicorns. They're, they're hard to find out there. They exist, but a little bit harder to find. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, my fondest memories from college were my intern days. It was really a great learning opportunity. But as again, a myth, hiring an intern, that'll do, that'll get me the results I'm looking for. That's the myth that we would want to debunk. Yep. All right. So myth number three now is I don't have enough assets. I'm not ready for this. I don't have enough videos. I don't have enough photos and, and it's going to be hard for me. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that one because that's scary. Sure. So if you, as a business owner, let's say you have a Dropbox of a handful of images, you know, you've got some on your computer, wherever you have them stored. The first thing that you can do to make your social media manager more effective is to give them access to your visual assets, however many you have. So again, if it, if it is half a dozen high quality images, a really creative social media manager can leverage those out. And, you know, whether it's the zoom in view or doing montages to make videos, we really advocate for any client that we work with to have their own photos. Um, you know, stock stock has come a long way and there certainly is a time and place to use some stock photos, but any amount of assets that are original to your brand is immediately going to help your social media manager be more effective for you. That's absolutely an important point because I think, you know, you're running your own social media and you're making posts, so you're getting the content the day of that mindset of I'm not ready for it. That's just going to continue on. That's never, you're never going to be ready. You're right. And part of the process, Paul, is the social media manager, they get into the creative zone and they're going to come up with content and be inspired based on what they see from you. So like I said, if, even if it's six images, um, a couple of video files, they're going to come up with ideas that you didn't even think possible. So we really like to have our social media managers leverage what the client provides them with. And then 30, 60, 90 days go by. And perhaps the business owner says, you know, it's time to invest in a photo shoot. Nothing crazy, nothing high production, but just with a goal of 50 images and maybe 10 video files. So, you know, we like the phrase, help me help you. So you do not have to have a set number of original assets, but if you have any and they are original and you have an intention on building upon that, you are going to help your social media manager make you more successful. Jerry Maguire is one of my favorite movies. Help me help you. <laughs> So Show me the money. <laughs> let's dive into myth number four is they won't be able to speak my voice. And I like doing the, the fun, cute little air quotes at that point, because that's that can be also a little bit scary. Right. You have a way you've been doing social media for a while. You have uh, a tone and voice of your own. And this is somebody new coming in. Will they be able to do it? Absolutely. You know, your your brand's voice is pivotal. It's so important to making sure that your message is getting out there clearly and correctly. So I would say that, first of all, a social media manager's job is to be that chameleon, to come in, learn your business, and be able to message it as close to the way you can as possible. Now, we're humans. We are not you. We are not the actual person that owns the business. So it, it does take a little time to get it right, but I have found it is most successful to invest a little extra time up front with your social media manager to understand Again, these are very general marketing terms, you know, the tone, the personality, um, which emojis do you want your brand to use? Because if you don't go through that stuff, then, then the business owner gets this content from their social media manager and it just falls flat. And then that, you know, the business owner feels like maybe I hired the wrong person and the social media manager feels like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And at that point, it could just be a conversation. Of this is the tone we're going for. This is these are the topics that we like to focus on. And another thing I would say, part of the process with the social media manager is coming up with ongoing ideas. So again, investing that time in early is going to make lighter work down the road as they come up, come up with more content for you. So you walked me right into myth number five. We're on <laughs> the fifth finger here now. Myth number five: they should be able to work without my input. And it, it's it, and I think this is something where you know, it's not a set it and forget it mentality. It is what you just described there. There's communication that'll happen. And while it feels like, oh, I'm hiring this person, they should just be able to go. Uh, you still you still need to have that, right? So tell me a little bit more about that, what that looks like in that style. Sure. So with any outsourced work, there has to be that initial knowledge transfer. 
right? We've talked about learning the brand's voice. Your social media manager will dive in, should dive in and learn everything they can about your business to be able to, like I said, write as close to um, the way you could as possible. But once you have set them free to be able to execute on the content posts, publish your posts, there still needs to be some communication. Mm -hmm. And one of the main things would be letting your social media manager know what's going on in your business. You know, they might think, okay, well, this is the particular subscription that they want sold. And this is when they want it sold by. And the business owner might say, oh gosh, no, we're focusing on something totally different or something changed in the warehouse. And we do need to make a change with the content. So definitely need some communication. I won't even say it's a heavy lift of ongoing management because we talked about how that could be the situation with an intern. So I would love for people to know that it doesn't mean a, a high or heavy time investment to manage your social media manager. But again, communication, and that could be in the form of emails. It doesn't even have to be a weekly call, but a weekly email, monthly calls, when you go through metrics, letting your social media manager know what's happening for the next month. Yeah, and, and, and setting up that cadence that works for you um, because every business owner is different. Some are, you know, a, a, a busy mom working to get their business off the ground, but juggling life of family and everything else. You know, so a communication time and schedule that works for you, whether it be monthly, weekly, daily email, phone calls, Slack, whatever it may be. I totally agree. And I would challenge a business owner that may be feeling that their social media manager, is, I don't want to say isn't right, but if there's just something off about the content or the anything that's being produced, take a step back and say, maybe I just need to have a conversation. And, and we really do train the women that go through our program to be proactive and say, you know, it's, it's halfway through the month. I'm planning next month's content. What's going on? But if that business owner gets busy and doesn't have a minute to get back to them, again, just thinking, maybe I haven't talked to my manager in a while. And that could be the first way for me to help them help me. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now for our audience that stuck around to the end of this piece here. We are going to give you a life-changing, world's greatest tip ever about social media. So Emily, tell us, we talked about this uh, before we started recording here, about the measurement piece of it. And this is, is something that I think sometimes uh, gets forgotten in some ways, but also sometimes gets so much emphasis. Tell us, give us this, this social media management tip that is important to you. Absolutely. So one of the things when you are considering outsourcing your social, that you need to have the aligned expectation with what it's going to do for you. Knowing your expectation and making sure your social media manager knows your expectation is critical. Make sure your outsourced social media manager is providing you with some sort of metrics report, some sort of tracking mechanism. And to dig a little deeper into that, what will a metrics report tell me? So a social media manager can deliver you eyeballs. They can deliver you impressions. If they're doing a great job with community management, they're going to deliver you engagement and they're going to deliver link clicks. So three very basic metrics that a business can expect a social media manager to track and impact. However, that's where it can just get a little more, well, okay, great. So they clicked the link 413 times, but then what? So the social media manager isn't going to know that. So if they know I'm leading the horse to water, that could be where the business owner says on the back end of their site, what's happening once that traffic comes to their site from social. So I'd love to have that expectation conversation upfront around how will I know if this is working? Well, making sure that you're clear with what messaging you want out first and foremost, but secondary, making sure that you are okay with the deliverable being impressions, engagement, and link clicks. So I'm going to ask you a loaded and trick question all in one here. How many link clicks and impressions should I expect? Okay, so yes, that's a loaded question. First, first and foremost, let your social media manager get in there for one month. Get in there for a month. You need to take a baseline. You need to know what is a normal amount of impressions, engagement, and link clicks based on how you've been doing social historically and then see how that social media manager can impact that. So while I do not want to set unrealistic expectations of you know, the proverbial hockey stick growth, there should be some month over month growth. And even if you see that perhaps followers may not be spiking, you're not growing by hundreds of followers every month, is engagement increasing? 
Is it increasing by a percentage? Maybe you found that engagement is increasing, but only on Instagram. Maybe LinkedIn isn't the network for you. So while I can't give you a direct answer, Paul, on an actual number, first and foremost, you have to see where you're at to be able to even go against that. Yeah, that is exactly the answer that I expected. And that's a hundred percent there because, and that's why that is a loaded and trick question because there is no, it's hard to set an expectation because every business is different. Every business is going to have different needs and styles and different things like that. So um, you survived that one. Nice Thank work. you, Paul. <laughs> I knew you would though, because this is what you do every day. All right. So on that note, uh, for those that are interested in learning more, share with us those that don't know you. I've known you for half a decade and I've had the, the luxury of being able to absorb your brain and absorb your knowledge every time we get a chance to interact. But those that don't, please share with our audience, one, your quick elevator pitch of what you do and what hey, their social media does, and then how our audience could reach you if they're interested in talking to you more. Thanks, Paul. So hey, their social media did start as a boutique social media agency for a solid decade. And we now are a unique training company where we teach women in particular, how to be social media managers. So if you're looking for an outsourced social media manager, you can come to HeyThereSocialMedia.com, find a professionally trained social media manager who works on a freelance basis that you contract with as an independent contractor. And we are found at our website. So HeyThereSocialMedia.com. And it's H A Y. Do you also own H E Y there social media or just I do. I did get a redirect. That's oh, so amazing. smart. Yes, right. right. So yes, our website, H A Y, like my last name. So hey there social media.com. But I suppose if you landed on the H E Y, you would also get to us. Yeah, you also find it. And of yeah. course, if you're watching this on YouTube, the link will be down lo- below in the description. Or if you're on LinkedIn, it's uh, up above us because we can't control the way they design their networks. Either way, uh, Emily, thank you so much for being here today. Truly appreciate it. You're always a pleasure to talk to and a wealth of knowledge. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes. And for our audience, if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you follow us, like, subscribe, any of the buttons that you see surrounding this piece, push them. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll look forward to seeing you again very soon.